we got a good amount done yesterday. So today, we're, I was thinking most of you would look at these little drafts that Jim has done. I showed you guys the draft on the waiting study yesterday. He's, he's done a rewrite on the gender language. And then on 226, which we passed out yesterday, the bargaining, uh, he's prepared an amendment to strike out section six and seven because we put them in the bill thinking we would alter them and then we didn't. So six and seven have no changes, but we say um, they are amended to read um, and they are not in fact amended. So this just strikes both of those out, so the bill will be uh, shorter. Okay. No, no, no change otherwise. Um, the other thing is, um, Andy reminded me that this was his bill, and so I asked him to report it, um, because the one that we, we got rid of his language, but that's where we put the health care bar. Oh, I see. Sorry. So he's going to report this on the floor. When you're going that distance? Yeah. So Bloomer's Blue, going to work it out with him. Good question I have, too. Are we going to do with 224 anything with the, the literacy pieces or dyslexia? Are we waiting for the house to send over the language? Waiting for the house on the best. So they're going to send a separate bill. Okay. Because I got a few people who reached out. I'm like, oh, what are you doing to 224? And I'm just like, I think the house is sending us something. And yeah. it's, it's like a perfect storm of misinformation that we don't have any control over because Jeannie's system insists that we have to use the existing title for the bill. It's not her system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the system that Jeannie is forced to use. <laughs> we cannot change the title. And then the House is working on it and has gotten everybody all stood up on structured literacy. And we chose as the only vehicle, one related to structured literacy. So it looks like both committees are madly working on that subject, and obviously they're not doing anything. So um, just apologize to anybody. I've already written a couple letters like that where I'm just like, sorry, I know it's confusing from home, but we're not doing anything to cross over. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, what did you see? I'm sorry, it's just looking at this drawing. Did you see the, the Scotland has yeah. this legislation to, oh, um, interesting. to make it make Countrywide. all, yeah, the all yeah. to everybody, all, every female in the country. So that's like a state law, though. In Scotland? <laughs> well, Scotland's no, it's bigger, it's bigger than yeah, Vermont. It's bigger than Vermont. No, it's smaller than <laughs> Texas. Or bigger than a bread basket. It's smaller than California. California. You're, 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 you're saying for all schools? Or for, and for every female in the country. So I, I had to go out to college and it's like, that's on the all national Slovakia team. I mean, like, if you. So yeah, that's like I the all state Pennsylvania. Sorry, no, <laughs> we get it. So let's just have a quick discussion about um, Corey's bill, academic athletes. athletes Is it something giving. you want? It's just a blank piece of paper that um, came out of the printer that can okay. be used for something. Right. Jeannie, where is the where is the stuff on the? Uh, it's three twenty eight. Using your other one, you like. We could. I think that's a fire protein. Uh, 328. We have a folder. Yes. 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 Oh, we we did it in the house. Just, I liked that because I had my iPad and then I had my iPad pen and I could color everything different colors. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of women. You know what I mean? So when I was taking notes, I could like write like it like the green. I did like. Now I'm sitting here like, no, I didn't get a green pen or I'm looking for a different color pen. So, so while we wait for Jim's, Jim's coming. He is, he's, 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 the yeah. Yeah. I was just um, going to check in with the committee about where people are on the student athlete compensation bill, because if the committee likes it, we can add it to the miscellaneous bill. I know there was some sentiment that we should wait. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought for all the overwhelming yeah. um, 
testimony was that there's going to be an in, um, the, what do you call it, NCAA uh, meeting in uh, January, and that they would they were proposing some rules rule changes, mm -hmm. and that um, every division one, two, and three all asked us to wait. Well, Division One didn't so much. Division Two division, yeah. depended on the sport. But Norwich one, did. Yeah. Norwich did. The guy who did say he goes, I don't expect us to actually do anything. <laughs> do anything in January. Okay. So that that's my only concern of the January piece is that they even said, yeah, we have these proposals, but like anything, they get tabled, and so will it draw out? I well, well, I mean, you did bring up the point of putting pressure on the NCAA if we need to take action. So I don't know if it was to that actually. Okay. <laughs> Did that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't here for the testimony. Okay, I was. Uh, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm not sh really sure. To, I'd have to review that. I did talk with Skyler Nash, who we were at another event, and we talked for about 15 minutes about it. it makes a very convincing case. He's, is he the student athlete we heard yeah. from? Yeah. yeah. So he was the one person that we heard from that was pretty clear that he wanted us to move forward and everybody to move forward. Um, I think the most compelling thing for me in the testimony we heard was that there are what what the other student athlete who was in here described, and I think this is more than just her description, as that the 2% the athletes really want it to happen. And the 98% want to go through this process with the NCAA to make sure that it treats them fairly. Um, because it's, mm -hmm. it's a boon for football, men's, and to a lesser extent, women's basketball, and um, hockey. hockey in some places, and baseball in some places. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it, because those athletes could probably make a lot of money on their name, image, and likeness. But the, other, the rest of the athletes, for the most part, with a few you know, what, individual I mean, exceptions would not necessarily benefit. There are some gender equity issues. There are definitely divisional issues with, with division one, two, and three. But I'm not understanding why it's not fair to them. So Dick Skyler, he'd make more money. He would make a lot more money. Player. Understood. But why? Why should he not have the right to do that? Why? Why does somebody who's really good at something and advertisers want them? Why, why is it unfair to somebody who's not as... So depending on how the rules are written, if they're written yeah. for those 2% of athletes to benefit, it may actually not benefit the rest of the athletes, um, depending on how how things move forward with the rules. But it could be worse than it is now. Well, right? commercial, I, mean, I think... Um, commercializes the whole experience so much that the, the, the other student athlete said that she really appreciated the, the whole colleague, the whole idea and culture of collegiate athletics that, that was not yeah that was yeah, yeah that, that was not like professional sports you know yeah. and, and she was great that the whole experience would be ruined well or at least tainted by yeah. having this commercial aspect and that um, the athletic directors that testified mm -hmm. all testified asking for us to wait from each mm -hmm. of the three divisions, saying that they, there were a lot of concerns specifically for Division Three <clears> and also <throat> potentially Division Two about inequities because they're, they right now don't do recruiting and don't do scholarships for the athletes. Mm -hmm. And this would say, oh, you know, this wealthy donor could offer $50,000 to this car dealership that then could invite the star basketball player to sign autographs and have that be sort of an incentive for that basketball mm -hmm. player to come to the school. And that just skirts around the Division three but rules in a way that the athletic directors feel really what's uncomfortable. The problem I already have with that, too, that the athletic directors don't have a problem with is that the school sells a sponsorship to that team, to that local car dealership. The kids still got to go sign autographs at the car dealership and don't make any money. So that's what happens now. Right, I mean, money is in the system. It's just being exclusively right. made by the... Well, what I like about our right. bill is it just says they can make money off their likeliness, and it doesn't go into effect until 2023. So I think it does put that pressure on the NCAA to be like, California doesn't go into effect until 2023. Mm -hmm. It does that same thing. It's the NCAA time to mm -hmm. move it along. And basically, you know, our bill would become... Hopefully they would figure it out at that point. 
Um, what I suggested to Corey as a sort of interim measure is that we either do a resolution, which I know the Senate doesn't always like, but a Senate resolution urging the NCAA to act, um, or just a letter from our committee, um, or even joint if the House wants to join on, mm -hmm. urging them to act, saying we've taken testimony, we want them to act, figure this out, and if they mm -hmm. don't act, then we would be move in the direction of yep. state law. Just as a I, I would have a hard time supporting it right now. My mm -hmm. one college in my district has asked that we not move forward right now because it's Division Three, and they're very concerned. So. Well, I like the resolution better than the letter idea. Yeah. Um, so obviously we don't have Andy today, but but you know we can we can see where we go on it. I I can see sense both ways. Either having it in with a date that goes out and could be pulled back or um, or altered, and I can also see a resolution where you're you're essentially trying to pressure. Um, I'm not sure how much pressure our resolutions produce. Yeah. Um, well, I think it would help our yeah. our NCAA people to go into this process to, to, say, to say, look, we have this resolution <laughs> from our um, Senate saying yeah. they want us to move, and we better get our tails in motion. We, ha you know, a UVM student is on what what is it? The student athletic, the SAC student athletic mm -hmm. committee for the NCAA. She's one of 30 students nationwide mm -hmm. on, in Division One who's on this committee, and they're they are the student voice in all the policy making division of the NCAA. So she's a really good vehicle. Her test I'm putting here because she testified. She was great. She's a field hockey player. Um, She's a vehicle to get our message to the NCAA along with our athletic directors. It, it dawns on me, I don't know the rule, like we're past committee drafting date and we're past um, bill drafting date deadline. Can you even write a resolution now? And, and I think you can. Yeah. Resolutions are different. Um, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. There's one that the Ag Committee may do that just okay. got drafted. Yeah. I, I, I don't think they have a deadline this year. Okay, well, not not sure where you land on the resolution idea, but I mean, whatever we do to move the conversation, I think we're going to have to develop because I think they're very clear NCAA is going to table it. NCAA is not going to do it until ten or fifteen states yeah. finally do something and say. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when we do uh, those bills on like incandescent light bulbs. I know we did one, and it was like we joined sixteen other states. Finally, the manufacturers are like, fine, we won't make them anymore. You're, it's kind of one of those things that I did speak to uh, Dave Walk. Uh, he's coming in on Tuesday after break. After break, okay. And he had a few things he'd like to yeah share with us. And and is is he basically pass or wait? Um, he was not pass. He was against it, and he was oh, against against even. In the future, so last time I spoke to him, but I hadn't talked to him now in probably a good week and a half or so. Mm -hmm. He said he's opposed to this. Okay. Um, so 25 states have bills now doing it. Mm -hmm. um, most are like a national standard, like ours. Florida is doing a bill that allowed them to to you know to go beyond that. Um, but yeah. Eventually, when you get to like 20, 10 states, Congress will also have to act too because they're not going to want different NCAA for pressure to put. Theoretically. But it looks like New, New Hampshire, New York, Massachusetts all have bills in us in the region. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it's a bad idea to think about a resolution if we've had negative testimony to that extent. Um, and Dave Walk apparently is going to come in opposition. Um, but if, if mostly the opposition is timing, and if mostly the idea behind it is to push the NCAA, the resolution would work. Did you see no one was the, opposed to paying the students that came. They just wanted to talk to them. Wait. Did you guys read the thing that the, the, the student, uh, can, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, the UVM field hockey player student sent us. Mm -hmm. I, she sent it to me, and I asked her if she'd sent it to all of you. How did you get it? I don't remember. 
Oh, really? Okay, I can forward it to all of you. Uh, but she sent a link to the letter from the SAC committee that basically mm -hmm. lays out the 98% the, the student argument, mm -hmm. um, which I find really compelling. Okay. You, gotta, yeah. you also got to remember that a lot of the students, the 2%, also come from less means than some of the other mm -hmm. athletes. Like, when you look at their schools that they attended, you know, I look at my school, like, most of the kids went to St. Lawrence, their parents and their Division three athletes were just playing sports, but they were going to go to St. Lawrence whether or not anyway. Mm -hmm. Where I think in the Division one sport, especially basketball, baseball, football, for people, that that's their only opportunity to hire a education mm -hmm. and to make you know money long term. So I think it's, when we talk equity and those other issues, I think some people are looking at it from perspective, but when they grew up on Cape Cod and went to Kent School or wherever they mm -hmm. did, and they're, they're with Olympic athletes, they're allowed to monetize their yeah. image all along, right? Yeah, so they had it. They weren't Not 30 years ago. Yeah, but they it's are just now. recent. No, no, I mean in their life all along. Yeah. So, like, from the time they start their career. Well, once they yeah. accept money, they can never participate in NCAA. No, I'm just talking about Olympics. Right, but I'm saying if you're young and you still want to go be the yeah. gymnast for the University of Michigan, but you're 16 yeah. and you're an Olympian, you can't accept money because you're excluded from competing in NCAA? I'm, I'm just wondering, is the NCAA the only institution that enforces a ban on people monetizing their own image? Because in our society, that's a that's a That's how we all make our living, doing this. Well, or, 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 or in, yeah, I mean, in a capitalist society, you know, you got a lawyer who puts ads on TV and says, you know, yeah. I'm the, the DUI lawyer, call me up. It's like to say, especially with, you know, uh, many African-American athletes, you're, we're going to make lots of money off you and we're going to forbid you yeah. to um, yeah. tap into any of that. But they don't, but, I mean, but, but like the Division Jews and Three Jews, they don't make money off of them, you know. Well, now, but, but I mean, suppose like Skyler was talking about if he started Skyler Nash um, basketball camp every summer um, in Vermont or in the region, that might get to be like a, a big thing, a big deal, you know, where he could make fifty thousand dollars in the summer. Or mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think his his testimony was very compelling. Yeah. I mean, he made the argument, you know, he comes from a working class background in Chicago, and he can't get money to pay for his plane tickets back and right. forth and things like that. And the summer camp, and he, his, yeah. one thing that he said that I thought was really compelling is the coaches can all do right. the, you know, yeah. the oh, yes. summer basketball yeah. camp, but the students can't. And I, that's an inequity well, between yeah. sort of labor and management almost. Or, but or one that always bothered me was Kevin Sneddon did one for an eye doctor. I just remember a radio ad, it was, I'm Kevin Sneddon, the UVM hockey coach, and I can see better because they did LASIK for yeah. me. It's, yeah. And it's like, nobody's there to watch you, bro. <laughs> yeah. So I think we should do something. I was hesitant to do a law because mm -hmm. I was asked by my person to wait. And I think also if we wait and they don't do anything, then we can do an even stronger bill that really is more yeah. prescriptive. Fair and enough. We could even mention that in the, in the resolution. Yeah, because it would be, you know, January is when they need. So we have plenty yeah. of time, assuming we're... Oh, well, you're not going to. Yeah, assuming we're all here, <laughs> whatever. Assume, assuming one of us is here. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Corey. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Corey, do you want to um, talk to Michael Chernick? And, yeah. Okay. okay. Great. So, no gym. Not yet. Ledge counts. Give me the bells, Kitty. They all left. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think most no. of them are not. Yeah, they're, they're voting. They're voting. Oh, is it active? Oh, no, they no, were done on the floor. I don't know, but he's in house ed and they're voting a bill out this way. Oh, hey. Oh, oh so yeah. they may be building a lunch. Voting a pre K bill out. Did you, Did you guys there? read the uh, <coughs> Vermont Digger story about that bill? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty clear, um, it lays out pretty clearly what they're doing. You remember the testimony for, was it the year before? <coughs> it might have been the year before. It, it was. Before you guys, oh yeah, here. I don't know Yeah, we did we did a, a session of testimony on pre-K and unraveling the oh the gosh. dual oversight, but also the question of the licensed educator: is that going to put private 
uh, providers out of business? Should we expand it? You know, we went back and forth and we created this language ultimately that that died because Dave Sharp didn't get his um, ten million dollars for expanded pre-K. Right. Um, but they've redone that work from scratch on their own and come up with a different solution than the one we have worked out here. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to go back to the drawing board and hear from witnesses of all sorts. <laughs> of all shapes and sizes. Well, we've got some pre-K students in here. Dr. Seuss would say so. I'm three years old. I'm pissed off. <laughs> I think it should be under the... I'll bring my kid in. We just need to be like, I want Barney. I want to get away with the glass. <laughs> yeah. And pretty stuff. Yeah, yeah. Get the glasses. And like Barney, we have so you can have a tear while well, that like my wife and I were talking to like when you know, yeah, if we're gonna put Barney on, we'll just do Barney. So now you guys are just Barney. <laughs> I can't believe you're letting your kid watch Barney. <laughs> Barney's like, so like, is bizarre and like yeah. sketchy. But you know what? Yeah. Yeah. I saw it. So Barney's taught him to clean up. Okay. Throws away like, things. <laughs> Teletubbies. No, I love Teletubbies. Teletubbies, yeah. Teletubbies are, is one of those shows that, that okay, I'm not going to say Although, it. if you think about it, it's weird kind of proto-fascism in Teletubbies. Not with you guys. So there's this loudspeaker and it's like, Teletubbies. Yes. And they all come out and you're like, what is that? Getting the command. And then there's Spongebob. Spongebob has a million Broadway show. Spongebob is a Broadway show. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I tried to. He's not on Sesame Street. <laughs> There's a new Sesame Street show out on Apple TV that's like it's called Finders. Yeah. Or Problem Solvers or something. But it's, you watch two episodes, it's the same thing, so it's really annoying. Because they're like three steps to solve the problem, but it's the same thing with just a different problem. So right. And you're just like, okay, no. But it's always that way, like Dora the Explorer. It's the same show every time. Dora. Blues Clues. Blue's Clues is great. I like Blue's Clues. Oh my gosh, so Blue's Magical the, Movie is the The original best. Blue's Clues guy, though. Yeah. yeah. What was his name? Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. There, yeah, there I were two. They, went to, they, they changed him out, and the second guy just didn't do it. Yeah. It was disappointing. So, um, <laughs> the backyard. Uh, Sesame, Street, yeah. Sesame Street started when I was like six or seven years old. We're in the same age, right? So, um, I remember my uh, school sent home a note to to my parents that this was going to be a good show that was coming, I was going to start on PBS. So my mother, my mother made me, she like, made me watch it. <laughs> but I was always rebelling in creative ways. So, um, so I said, she said, sit, you sit in that chair and you, in front of the television. <laughs> so I, so I turned myself upside down in the chair. I was in the chair, but I was like, in front of me. And she came out of the kitchen and she looked at me and she's like, <laughs> she just went back in the kitchen. <laughs> it was great. I was awesome. You know what the best adventure kids is now is he's got these markers. Since I am show, I'm going on off. But it's got paper that the marker only works on a certain paper. So it's like he can draw on the wall with it. Nothing. Right. It's, it's oh, a certain paper. Wow. It's, it's right. probably got PFAS in it or something like that. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him eat those. There's probably markers. something wrong with it. It sounds like a miracle drug. <gasps> Jim Demeray. Jim Demeray. We, we decided to tentatively craft a resolution around the athletic compensation bill instead of dropping it in here as a part of this bill. So do you know, is there any deadline on resolutions? I don't know. That's how I might question. Yeah, I'll ask you Yeah. 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 Okay. For sure. Yeah. Um, and then I was wondering, were you able to, you and I had talked earlier today about that rewrite of the gender. Yeah, sure. Okay. okay, let's take a look at that yeah. first. Okay. So, um, oh, what did they just vote out today? Yeah, I, I was just working. I just, they wrote out the uh, literacy bill. The literacy. Oh, okay. If we take out well, our first education in human services and literacy is now out. And literacy is, uh, is that mostly up? grants. Mostly grants. Okay. okay. Is there is there any uh, mandatory um, screening or anything? Uh, it's already a, there's already a statute in place, uh, twenty nine oh three, that requires screening. Uh, so, third grade? Uh, yeah, and uh, I think it's page one through three. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then also screening at four years old and beyond if you had any trouble. So I think there's a problem with, with 
um, compliance with that. Okay. So rather than do a new law saying the same thing, I'm just trying to get people to comply with this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I have a few more so it'll, it'll, well, I assume it'll come over to us. Their, their money committees aren't shy about killing their bills. Yeah, there's a not eight hundred thousand dollar appropriation. Yeah. No. no. Okay. So this, uh, so sorry for the record, Jim Dimery on his console. We are looking at draft five point one of what is essentially your miscellaneous bill. Uh, S two four. Five point one. I have four point one. Okay. Oh, yeah. two. No. Oh. Do you, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, that does not have language that it's not worth that score. Uh, is this four point? I have four point. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Five. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that I sent the... Okay. So you're working from five point? Yeah. And it has, the five point one has your language there, so... We'll have to wait for yeah. Gene to print it out. Is it in color, Jim? Is it in color? It's in color, yeah. I um, put in this bill as well, as well the um, changes to Act 173. Oh, good. Good. That's correct. But I'm not really ready to do that with you because I, okay. I've been running around and I need to get a sped timeline up nope, for no you. I'll go through with that. So. Good, good to have it in there, though, so we don't forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to replace four one. <coughs> no, I did send it to the copy room, and this is what I got. You should not have. I had gotten copies of it. it. No, I, I had four copies of it before. Where? I'll go see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Two seventy three. Yeah, yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at it. I just printed it out. Okay. But, um, no, I'll, I'll look at it and eight. do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when do you yeah. Yeah. what time? When is yeah. it good for you? Four hours. Okay. Yeah, we can figure it out. All right. Yeah. I will probably look at it on, okay. and work on it on Sunday. Okay. I'll be in touch about. I'll email you. Through the line numbers, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it would be helpful. I don't know why when I print them for me. They won't do the line numbers, but yeah, that'd be good. Um, I know. I'm printing it for my phone, so that may be why. But, um, and then the amendment to the, this bill about the health policy, I also got that, and then I need to talk to other people before I get back to you. But we can talk about both of those okay. next week. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Interesting. I was impressed with how fast you were. <laughs> He's too fast. I don't have time to look at these right now. Well, it's not in my head. Do you tell yeah. me some things? I'll write them down, but then I'll like, did I write? Yeah. So I've got like, to do it. I, that is wise. I need to get better at that. <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, we're going to step down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and at that point, if you yeah. scout, why would you, you know, floss? Okay, so we'll anyway. just. So we're just yeah. Can I ask you, since we have a moment, did Bobby talk to you about 273? The, yeah, that seems fine. You don't need it to come here? Okay. I just no, didn't I mean, want any you know, problem on the floor with no. people going, hey. Because it does, it does affect Title 16. No, I understood. It's, yeah. But, you know, it's, it seems more properly like a money committee and ag. Yeah, we're trying right. to keep it focused on local foods, yep. and the vehicle is school lunches, basically. And I, I yeah. think this committee would now have a problem. Yeah, with I, I, there's nothing in it that I think you guys would yeah. have a problem with. Um, but Bobby, so And Bobby's trying to get the money from the ag sort of piece of appropriations right. rather than the education piece, so I think yeah. that's helpful, too. But he's understandably gun-shy because he and Chris Gray have, like, tangled over every bill for the last, whatever, what, the four years. Yeah. Hello, Allison. You look surprised. Please come in and brighten our room. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we're just hanging out. We were just doing that too. It's as if you know, we, class was dismissed, and then we yeah. just we just had to discuss all sorts of things. It's like, issues. It's like the day before Christmas vacation at, at school, where your teacher shows you Shrek. And, 
Yeah, yeah nice great. work on your library, Bill. We talk about Blue's Clues. Thank you. Nice work. Thank you. Not not a single question. <laughs> That's because we all know in our hearts it's all true. That's true. Yeah, I try and much to needed. lull you into oh, thinking. Behind it. It's our draft. Wait. Oh, I'm too big. Here. There's a draft. I see you're having just a quiet moment. Yes. All before this. We're we actually working. So. <laughs> okay. Enjoy. Thank I figured you. these people would have hung around if we were just having fun. Oh, we're amazing them. Okay. Okay. So, um, do I just go through one change on the um, Mexico Hygiene Park first? Or yeah. Do? Okay. So, page eight, on line 15. This now reads, this leads to the majority of bathroom issue. So, it says now a school district and an improved independent school shall make menstrual hygiene products available at no cost in a majority of gender-neutral bathrooms and bathrooms designated for females that are generally used by females in any of grades 5 through 12 in any school within the district or under the jurisdiction of the board. Yeah, I, I think that gets it. Yeah. What do you think? Um, yeah, it's a little convoluted, but yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Council style, like I, I was. No, not not just Jim. All, all of Ledge Council. They, the, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what Bryn Hare and um, others say in judiciary. Because I'm always like, I would break that into either two sentences, or I would use m dashes or something to to um, have it not be one long. I love m dashes, but you can't either. That's what I mean. Yeah. Your style. Um, yeah. The criterion don't allow you to kind of break stuff up in that way. Yeah. No, I'm not sure why, but yeah, you can break these open lists, but you can't. Yeah, yeah I can't. Like, but you so, know, I think there's no real confusion there. Um, yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. I'm just looking at the next sentence. Um, okay. Actually, um, the, okay. So in consultation with school nurse, they decide which bathrooms, but. Didn't we want to say that they can decide how to how to do it? Well, I think the bill is silent on that. Yeah. Which allows them to do whatever. To do what they want. Okay. Yeah, and but it does say that we do want them to have access to menstrual hygiene products at no cost and without the embarrassment of having to request. Yeah. So that. Yeah. So whether they. Yeah. Through. Whether they use a a basket with the product or a dispenser would be fine under the bill. Under the way bills are. But I think if we if we. If we're, if we are not silent on it, we're going to involve ourselves in another definitional <laughs> yeah. hunt. You know? We're on another sentence like this. Yeah. 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 One of my friends who has two teenage girls told me that she felt like she was the um, tampon fairy. So that is another option. They could use a tampon fairy. Yeah. <laughs> so we're that in the bill. Yeah. But that in Well, it's up to the school nurse as if she wants to employ one. <laughs> Okay, keep going. Okay. <laughs> we're we're going to skip through uh, what's on the next page. Is it all the special education? That that's, those are the tweaks in 173 that we will look at and come back. Ah, right. yeah. Okay, and then we go to um, the new section uh, on page 14. Uh, and this is PC section law. And it reads gender I balance. Think, I think it's 20 and 5, Jim. 20 and 5. So you have 19 and 6? Oh. Yeah, because the they, students just elected changed. two men. Yeah. Oh. So I believe it's now 20. Okay. So this reads, the Board of Trustees of UVM um, currently is composed of an overwhelming majority of men with 20 men and 5 women. Uh, the Board of Trustees of the Vermont State Colleges currently has gender balance on its board. The state goal is to have uh, the UVM board achieve gender balance by... 2025 and maintain it thereafter, and the uh, VSC board maintains, maintains their gender balance. Gender balance means for the VM board that, uh, that the 25 member board is composed of 12 or 13 members 
where women or people who identify as women or non-binary, and for the VSC board, um, that the 15-member board is composed of seven or eight members who are women or people who identify as women or non-binary. Okay, so I'm sorry, but, but so you remember we got testimony that a non-binary person is not the same thing as a woman. We, we, we really project. To, yeah. Yeah. So we need to take out more non-binary. We, we need to concentrate on women at the moment. And then I think. Fine yeah. with me. I, I would agree. I think it would be wonderful if we had non-binary women on the board, or non-binary uh, people on the board. But um, I think that is, it dilutes it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. So we'll make that change. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but are we going to say, then we're just going to put a period after who are women? Period. Yeah. To identify. Well, no, who identifies women. I, well, I, if you say. Are, I think well, you can say, say who, who are women. Well, you can just say who, who identify, identify as, as women because, yeah. you know, I identify as a woman. And, and yeah. So, so I, to be clear, we're saying composed of seven or eight members who identify as women. Not who are women or people who identify as women. Yeah, I think who identify as women would cover it yes. more completely without having two phrases. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So then we're saying that trans women would, would count. satisfy this. Yes. yes. Okay. Here. And then I uh, read goes on to say, given that uh, the EVM and VSC boards have four categories of trustees, which include those in above there. Uh, Four categories of thank you trustees, um, which include those appointed by the governor, by the general assembly, and by representatives of the university, as well as student trustees. It is incumbent on the legislative and executive branches to undertake efforts to further the city goal in achieving and maintaining gender balance on these boards. Why don't we say um, it is also incumbent? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. It is also incumbent. Okay. Um, and that says, on before January 31, 2021, and annually thereafter, as part of their annual budget presentations to the General Assembly, UVM and VSC shall provide, at a minimum, the most recent five years of information on the gender composition of their respective boards of trustees. This information shall include the appointing entity, initial uh, appointment date, and length of service, and shall summarize recruitment and replacement strategies employed for recently expired and imminently expiring trustee positions. Looks good to me. So we don't call out like the ones that are, you know, appointed by representatives of the university specifically. Yeah. Self perpetuating. Yeah. No. I mean, there just do, couldn't we say they're called up here? Yeah. I don't want to use self right. rating because that term isn't known. No, yeah. So I, it, it, uh, those are the folks who are, um, it says so in line 17, and by representatives of the university. Actually, let's put um, by self perpetuating trustees there. For both? So it would say <coughs> appointed by the governor, by the general assembly, and by self perpetuating trustees as well as student trustees. What well, didn't Jim just say it's not in the statute? No, to call well, that? Um, no he, he said that people wouldn't wouldn't know the term. Uh, but but I think probably many people would in the in the legislature, but that's that's what the term of art is. Yeah, that's what they put on their website Does that make sense, Jim? Yep. Okay. But I don't feel like they've been there's yeah. nothing there that says that they need to do something. Right. So why are we saying it's also incumbent on the legislature and the executive branches? We haven't said that okay. they need to. Do we could say at uh, line 14, following where that <coughs> sentence ends. Yeah. We could say um, the self-perpetuating members of the UVM trustees. Uh, Shall them? 
Well, I'd, I'd rather avoid that. So we could say. Well, or it should undertake efforts to. to yes, yeah, should say no or. or yeah, it should undertake efforts to. Should, should or shall or shall. shall. No, not shall. Oh. No, I, I, I want to avoid that, and that this whole thing is written to avoid that. <laughs> so. Um, what, should. Um, Will. Um, <laughs> the the self-perpetuating trustees um, have uh, an obligation to address this imbalance mm -hmm. in their choice of um, replacement trustees. Oh, that's good. Mm. Did you get that? That's <laughs> With that change, how does it look? Yes, that's that's okay. okay. We're not deciding anything. I'm just wondering. Is that language only for you to do? One second. What's that? Uh, that's a good oh, point. I, I um, that was, okay. What was that? Is that language only for you to Yes. Yes, because um, right now State College is has yep. priority, yep. and and we've said that if we want them to maintain it, and they also have to report. Yeah. So there's. Uh, yeah. Ruth, did you say something? Um, I was just about to ask about there are student trustees on the yes. State College board too as well. Pretty sure. Yeah, there. I think there is. Yeah. So where do I the lines to go? So right right at the end of B. Section B. Yeah, at the end of B. Okay. Okay. Well, that's. I think that's all I had for us to do today. I appreciate everybody sticking around for a little, a little more. 